Did you know that every single day the sun bombards Earth with enough energy to power our entire planet for thousands of years? Today we will attempt to capture as much of that energy as possible by building a giant sun tracking solar death ray mirror based on NASA's billion dollar James Webb telescope design. The goal? To create the most effective modular solar heater ever. But can we actually make that work? This project will not only be my biggest one yet, surprisingly it also turned out to be one of the most challenging projects I've done so far. Everything from critical design flaws to lessons I've thought I've already mastered by now. Nothing could have been farther from the truth. But don't worry, I walk you through everything as we build this thing. The first question I had before even starting was, if we use the James Webb telescope as inspiration for our solar death ray, should we also use the same color mirrors? Because the James Webb telescope uses gold mirrors, and that's for a good reason. Gold is excellent at reflecting infrared light, which is essential for observing objects deep in outer space. But gold is not the most optimal material for capturing heat from the sun down here on Earth. That's because gold, unlike silver for example, doesn't reflect visible light well. And visible light is crucial for concentrating sunlight to generate heat. But how much of a difference does gold versus silver really make in capturing heat from the sun? After all, most of the heat is transferred by the infrared light emitted by the sun, right? So, as a quick side experiment, because I was kind of curious, I laser cut two plexiglass discs, heated them up and used a 3D printed mold to shape them into two identically curved mirrors to focus all the light that hits the mirror to a single point just in front of it and spray painted one of them with a silver chrome paint and the other one with a gold chrome paint. But unfortunately after drying the reflectiveness of the two mirrors doesn't look even close to identical. So this wouldn't be a fair test. Luckily in the meantime I had already started working on a test setup for the solar tracking mechanism. And while working on that I came across two components in a forgotten box of parts. A sensor that can measure light intensity and a small laser module. And it might be a bit of a stretch, but with these we could still use the spray painted mirrors to test whether gold or silver works better. Let me explain. I've spray painted two small acrylic squares, one with the gold chrome paint and the other one with the silver. Now if we take the most reflective of the two, which seems to be the gold one, and place it in this little test setup that holds the laser module as well as the light sensor, we can shine the laser beam via the mirror into the light sensor and measure the light intensity. If we then do the same thing for the silver mirror, we know exactly how much the two differ in reflectance. After then testing both mirrors in the sun, we can use this value to calculate what the heat output would have been with equal optimal reflectivity. To measure the heat output of each mirror, I laser cut a wooden frame that will not only hold the two temperature sensors, but will also make sure that the focal point of each mirror is perfectly aligned with each sensor. And while this setup is gathering data, we can take a closer look at the frame that will hold the 18 individual mirrors. To build the frame, I used a combination of laser cut wooden arms and screwed everything together using a bunch of heavy duty 3D printed brackets. And I must say, I really like how this frame looks so far. But then of course, this project isn't about looks, it's about functionality. And to get the most heat out of this giant mirror, it needs to constantly and automatically track the sun to stay perfectly aligned. To allow unrestricted 360 degree movement, the mirror must be able to rotate on at least two axes. A challenge I tried to tackle by designing an adapter flange to serve as the foundation for the entire mirror assembly. This adapter flange, which is basically just a giant gear, will not only connect the mirror to the base and serve as the pivot point for the two axes of movement of the mirror, it will also hold the motors that will drive the mirror's movement on both axes as well as the water pump and other control electronics. And while I was putting this together, I started to wonder if this maybe was a bit too many functions for this one part. Because with so many different features cramped up in such a small area, something has to go wrong, right? But we'll see, hopefully it won't be too bad. Since the entire weight of the mirror will rest on this gear, 
and because wood on wood doesn't rotate smoothly, I bought the largest lazy Susan bearing I could find, hoping that with the bearing mounted in between, the mirror rotates smoothly enough so the motors won't burn out. But before I show you how I automated the mirror's movements, we need to attach the 18 mirrors to the frame, so we can test whether the motors are strong enough to move the full weight of the mirror assembly. And if you think that attaching and aligning 18 individual mirrors to form one giant parabolic mirror sounds like a challenge, well, you're absolutely right. But I think I found a simple solution that could make it a little bit easier. By using adjustable screws combined with compression springs behind each mirror, we can precisely adjust the angle and position of each mirror without it becoming loose or wobbly. The only problem, metal springs aren't exactly cheap. And since we'll need at least 53 of them for all 18 mirrors, I started wondering if there were other options. That's when I thought, what if we could replace those steel springs with 3D printed springs? TPU filament for example is flexible, resilient and can be easily printed in various shapes and sizes. The big question of course is whether TPU springs would be stable and durable enough for long term use, especially in our case where the mirror will be exposed to heat and sunlight. Ok, first impressions look promising, but will they also retain its elasticity after being under pressure for a while? To find out, I printed a little block so I could easily compress three different springs, each printed with a different wall thickness, and keep them compressed for at least a few hours. While we test that, let's check out the result of the gold versus silver mirror. As you can see, the result speaks for themselves. Silver crushed gold in terms of heat output over the same period in the same sunlight. So there's absolutely no doubt which color we'll be using for our mirror. And for our mirrors, there are of course multiple options we can go for. But I chose to laser cut standard transparent plexiglass and apply a reflective window film. By then heating the mirror in an oven until the plexiglass becomes flexible, we can give it any shape we want using a 3D printed mold. But it turns out it's easier said than done, because the mirror film does not agree with the minimum temperature needed to make the plexiglass flexible as you can see. And honestly, this was the last thing I was expecting. But since the entire project depends on these mirrors, this is kind of a huge problem. So to try and fix this, I started experimenting with different temperatures using smaller test samples. And luckily, the results got better with lower temperatures. The only downside, a lower temperature means that the plexiglass will be less flexible and thus the mirrors will be harder to shape. So instead of heating them to the point that each mirror shapes itself in the mold using just its own weight, I put together this clamping mechanism with which I can force each mirror in the shape of the mold and keep it that way while it cools down. And luckily that seems to work perfectly. So I spend the next 9 hours straight laser cutting, applying the mirror film and shaping each mirror, only to find out it was all for nothing. Because it turned out that the spherical shape of the mold I designed wasn't exactly suitable for focusing all the light at one point. I instead should have designed a mold with a parabolic shape. I guess I grabbed the wrong one again this morning. At first glance, spherical and parabolical mirrors might look the same, but there's a crucial difference in how they reflect light. A spherical mirror is basically a segment of a spherical surface, causing incoming light to focus at multiple points instead of one single focal point. This could lead to energy loss, making it less efficient for concentrating light, and thus heat. A parabolic mirror on the other hand has a slightly different shape because it is specifically designed to reflect all incoming parallel light, light rays to one single focal point. This makes parabolic mirrors perfect for applications requiring high concentrations of light and heat, like the James Webb telescope, solar collectors or even our solar death ray. So new mold, new opportunities. After reheating and reshaping all 18 mirrors, we can finally mount them. But for that we need some springs. So it's time to see if our 3D printed springs are still as elastic after being fully compressed for a few hours. Oh, that's not bad at all, because the initial spring length fresh of the printer was 30mm. 
With all the mirrors mounted, we can see that there's still a large gap in the center. That's where this aluminum heat plate will go that I had CNC machined by PCBWay. And it keeps blowing my mind how they managed to deliver such high quality custom parts so quickly at such competitive rates. This heat plate for example was delivered within 6 days after ordering for just $171. Believe me, you won't find anyone else who can do it faster or cheaper. And trust me, I've tried. Make sure you check out the link in the description to see what PCBWay can do for your project. Special thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So the heat plate goes in the center of the mirror where all the energy collected by the mirror will be focused back on by the secondary mirror. This means that the entire aluminum disc will get incredibly hot in no time. By sealing the back of the heat plate with a plexiglass disc, we can pump water through the spiral groove to heat the water with the plate's energy. But more on that in a minute, because before the plate can start heating up, we need to finish the most crucial part of this project, the sun tracking mechanism and the motors that will drive it to make the mirror as efficient as possible. Surprisingly, sun tracking can be done quite simply with just four light dependent resistors, or LDRs for short, which are separated by small partitions. Here's how it works. Each LDR continuously outputs a signal voltage based on the light intensity that hits it. When the sun isn't perfectly aligned with the partitions, some LDRs receive more light than others. By comparing the values of each LDR using a microcontroller like an Arduino, we can determine which direction the mirror needs to rotate to align with the sun again. The mirror's movement is then driven by two electric motors, but this is where I think I might have really messed up. Let me explain. I am not too worried about the mirror's left to right rotation, because this axis is supported by the large Lazy Susan bearing. My concern is the placement of the spindle drive that will tilt the mirror, because it's mounted real close to the pivot point. So the weight of the mirror will act as a lever, and not in a good way. But there's only one way to find out if I'm right. This actually works far better than I expected. Just to be sure, let's run this a few more times to see if it makes any difference. I really don't understand why I was so worried. This works perfect. So, time to introduce the mirror to its powerful natural opponent for the first time. So, yeah, this is what happens when you build a solar collector in the Netherlands. And unfortunately, the forecast doesn't look much better either. So for now, no test results. But let's look on the bright side. Since I can't test this thing yet, it gives us the opportunity to implement any adjustments or improvements that you may have before testing. So, is there something you would have done differently? Or something you would have added to what you've seen so far? Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you in part 2.